Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to the garage. Now, as most of you probably know, I've just bought myself a 2008 GSX R1000. Went out for a first ride on it a couple of weeks ago, video at the top. Um, noticed a bit of brake judder from the front end and thanks to everyone for the feedback from that video to say check this, check that, check the other. There's a lot of people complaining with brake judder on those sort of early um, retro, retro, modern classics, modern classics, I think was the term we, we, <laughs> we decided to give them. But a lot of feedback back from people to say, try this, try that. So what I thought I'd do is put a little video together of ways to fix front end judder on your motorcycle without just replacing the discs, because I have managed to fix it. In this video, I've managed to fix the judder. So I've got some tips and tricks in this vid of what I went through fixing the brake judder issues on the GSX-R. So if that sounds of interest, if you've got a juddering front end and you don't want to splash out on your discs unnecessarily, grab yourself a cup of tea, sit down, relax, and enjoy the video. Chopsy, roll the intro. First job, I am going to try and have a look at why we've got that brake uh, disc judder up front. I've got the bike up on paddock stands. Unfortunately, my ABBA stand is with Greg at the moment when we did his GSXR, so I'm back to paddock stands. And uh, yeah, little trick. So when I did the video uh, of my first ride, a lot of people said, try this. You know, tr it could be these bobbins are seized because these front discs uh, are fully floating and the, and the actual disc is supported to the carrier with the bobbins. And if these bobbins are prone to seizing and if the disc can't move as it's supposed to, then it can cause that brake judder I've seen. So the couple of things I want to check, I've spun the discs and to the eye, looking from the front, I can't see any movement or any obvious warping of the discs. So to the eye, they look straight, don't they? Of course, when you're moving, it won't take much uh, of a warp to show up, but they're certainly not rocking back and forth. So uh, let's try the bobbin trick first. So this isn't my idea, as I mentioned. This is a, I think it was a Dale Boy's Garage video I saw, but I'm using a bolt to fit through the bobbin. <laughs> oh, it's too big. That's not something you're used to hearing very often. So put your bolt through the disc bobbin. That's my bum. Oh, Mavis. Take your nut, put it on the back. Now, unfortunately, I don't even have my socket set at the moment. That's at Greg's as well, for when we did his GSX-R. Oh, I can tell straight away, look, as, as you tighten it, the idea being that bobbin is turning and that is very, very free, very easy spinning. What you can do now is put a little bit of brake cleaner in there. So let me do that. But yeah, that, that, that's very free moving. Let's try the next one. Normally you only get this if a bike is, you know, really filthy and not been clean. This, this bike's so clean, I think it's unlikely to be the problem, personally. Second one, yeah, quite loose again. But let's spray a bit of cleaner in there, just in case. And then repeat for the other 10 bobbins. Check back in a minute. Well, that's them all cleaned. I mean, that uh, to me, to the eye, that disc looks very true, doesn't it? I'm sure to get the amount of vibration I'm seeing, if the disc was warped, you'd be able to physically see that disc moving. Okay, Mavis, start. The guy said he'd change the pads. I don't know if he's had the wheel out, but if the wheel's not aligned and you haven't got your pinch bolts done right, it can cause sort of tension on the front end. So before I start looking at the headstock, I think it probably is the headstock from that knocking, but I'm just gonna loosen things at the front end, bounce it again, and see if that's any better. So uh, we get my tools, and I haven't got all my tools here, and my socket sets at Greg's, where we fitted his exhaust. So I'm gonna have to use spanners. So excuse spanners on things like this when I, I do have sockets, but they're not here. God, he's done the shot. Bloody King Kong. Ugh. So this bike has pinch bolts both sides of the calipers, 
And depending how your front end goes together is which order you do this. And this is the this is the thing I had with the SMCR. You know, you've got to make sure that the wheel is held in and located properly. And I can't quite remember <laughs> the process to do it properly. So I'm going to check with YouTube. Dave Moss has an excellent video on how to uh, you know do your front end up properly. So you don't get judder and stuff like this. Because it could be down to the front end not put back together properly. It's possible. Let's look at the easy easy fixes first. Removing uh, the deer. Are your fork legs crooked? This is the one. Please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Sorry, Dave, I haven't subscribed. On the R6, the axle goes through on the right leg and pushes all the way through to the left. That's not the G6R. And that's fully seated in there. So now we're going to go ahead and put the bolt in on the other side. Yeah. So next step, we've got to make sure that that is tight. Tighten that bolt. Against the axle, there it is. And then it'll turn the axle in place. So we just want to make sure that's nice and tight. There it is. Okay, so that's done at this point. Now we're going to head pinch bolts this side. and tighten our pinch bolts. Oh, right, that's the nuts. This is side. the captive side because this bolt pushes that leg onto that interior spacer and locks this side in place. Oh, so once that's locked, what I thought. Yes, you really are watching someone watching bolts. a YouTube video. So because the axle goes through this side this way, there's no bolt here holding this foot captive against the spacer. So this is the free leg because there's nothing holding it. So when we bounce this up and down, this leg on that axle has the ability to move and straighten itself out. If you don't bounce the front end, you can have the leg bent. And in that bend and that pivot, the fork binds. And you get all kinds of breaking chatter and other issues. Breaking chatter and other issues, that's what I've got. And these that's now pulled the spindle through, crushed the washer here. So, this is all tight. This end now, now we can just nip up our pinch bolts. Let me tighten this up. That's that. So, let's bounce again, and that'll get that left hand leg seated where it wants to be. And then we tighten up the pinch bolts. And by bouncing it, you know, it lets this side get itself centralised. As the brakes are so critical on this bike, because a lot of people have said the brakes can warp, the discs warp easily. A lot of people have seen multiple warp disc problems, and it could just be from simple, simple things like not setting it up properly at the front. So there's another trick which Dave Moss says. I'll show you now with the calipers. Interestingly, after following that advice from Dave Moss, I've got a lot more binding of the discs now. So the, so the calipers are obviously in a slightly different position where it's pulled in on the spaces, it's not quite right. So let's fix that on the, hopefully by removing the calipers and showing you a little little trick, we can, uh, we can sort this now. So this is another Dave Moss trick. I'm not taking ownership or credit for this. This is from Dave Moss again. So that's calipers loose on the mounts now and you can see the wheel is spinning more freely again. Still a little bit bindy, more than I'd ideally like, but okay. What I'm gonna do is while we're here, I might as well have a quick look at their pads and calipers and stuff. The guy said, the dealer I bought it from, a dealer, the seller, it's like a private seller who sells lots of bikes, not an official dealer, I don't think. But he said that he'd put new pads in it so let's take a look and see what we've got. No, they are not new. That would be shinier than that, that base material. New pads, I'm calling bullshit. They are not brand new brake pads. No, 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 no. But there's plenty of life on them. There's nothing actually wrong with them. But when uh, the seller tells you he's just put new pads in it, hmm. Okay. He also said he'd just serviced it as well. <laughs> I better change the oil. I'll get my toothbrush and a bit of brake cleaner. Just give it a whiz. A whiz over. Oh, 
is that Mrs. Chops's toothbrush? So it actually looks pretty decent, pretty even amount of piston sticking out. So it looks like they've been, you know, that there's no sticky piston and one stuck out more than the other. It looks like we're getting an even brake pressure on the pads from this caliper. So uh, I'm going to put it back together and put it back on. OK, so just remove the caliper the other side and look at the uneven piston um, position. Suggests to me, you know, the disc hasn't been running absolutely centrally, which could be explaining the vibration I've got, because you've got more pistons showing on the left-hand side than we have the right-hand side. So the disc definitely has been, hasn't been running true through the middle of the caliper. So this could be part of the problem. So I'm going to push the pistons in, try and get them sort of centralised, and then we'll put it all back on, and I'll show you the Dave Moss sort of trick to sort of centralising the discs within your calipers. So... This could be the problem, you know. Just try and push these now. Yeah, good luck with that. I tell you, I might have a tool for this. I might have a tool for this. I had this caliper piston gripping tool I bought ages ago. I've never actually used it, but that goes inside of the piston, squeeze it, and it lets you grip the piston from the inside without damaging it. I'm going to see if I can... I could just crack the nipple and let a bit of pressure out and push the pads about, but it means I've got to bleed the whole brake system. So I'm going to try and move the pads with the system done up, you know, but you should still be able to move the pistons around. It'd be a lot more difficult, but should in theory be able to do it. Ooh, pushing. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So I've pushed the pistons back in and sort of spread them a bit more evenly within the caliper. So I'm going to put the pads back in, put it all back on, pull the lever, get things centralised, and see if it's any well, I can't tell if it's any better about riding it, but it could this could be it. This could bloody be the fix, you know. I'll show you now the Dave Moss trick to centralizing your discs and everything. Again, this isn't my trick, this is from Dave Moss, so I'm not claiming credit for this. The wheel is now much freer, so obviously that binding was happening at this caliper. So I, I'm relatively hopeful. <laughs> This could, this could fix the chattering, the brake judder. Let's see. So the trick with the brake caliper alignment is to get your bolts almost there. So let me just get these almost, so we're almost in position. So tighten your caliper so you've just got a little bit of movement. I'll do the same the other side. Then spin your wheel and pump your brake lever. Now, because I've pushed those pads back, I've got nothing at the lever at the moment. So let me just push those, here we go. The pad, hey, I've got contact now. Spin the wheel, slam the brake off, and that basically pulls the rotor centrally on the caliper. So do it, spin it, hold the brake lever on, and now tighten your uh, calipers in position with your brake lever held. That's the wrong size spanner. So I've got the brake lever on now, I'm holding it down, and I'm tightening the calipers in position with my brake lever held in down. And just nip them for now. Same for the other side, while keeping the brake lever held down, I'm gonna to have to swap my hands holding the brake lever down. You can't see this side, so uh, just trust me, I'm tightening the caliper as we speak. Okay, spin it. Look at that. Look at that. As you pull the brakes now, everything is aligned. And now, my brake lever is uh, not great. It's, it's all right, but it's coming quite close to my fingers. So I think I'm just going to bleed the brakes now as well. Just give the front end a little bleed through. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get that fluid changed anyway. I don't know when it was last done. So let's bleed the brakes. Pretty good actually, there's not many air bubbles coming out. Nice old fashioned non-ABS system. Just a pair of calipers, some brake lines and a master cylinder. <laughs> None of that ABS unit to bleed through. I've um denied, I've decided I may as well check how tight the headstock is while I've got this far. So I'm gonna remove the uh, top clamp. It's only held on with a couple of bolts. It comes out relatively easy. So I'm gonna lift that off um, and have a look and see, just give it a nip. Just basically give the, the wind down um, jobbies a nip up. Top tip to save damaging your nuts. <laughs> no one likes to damage their nuts. Just put something over uh, you know, the top yoke bolt just to protect it. Ideally a rubber glove. Don't know rubber gloves are at Greg's house. 
when we did his exhaust. So a couple of baby wipes just to protect that uh, lovely anodized top nut from stretching. And I remembered I may not have my proper, but I've got my torque wrench. It's not ideal, I know. You shouldn't use torque wrench to undo stuff. I know all this, but I ain't doing that with a spanner. Okay, it's hand tight. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, it's hand tight. That's a pretty good start as to what the knocking could be caused by. Obviously that doesn't, that's just the top yoke on there, but being hand tight, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, baby. There we go. So basically the bottom yoke comes up through the frame, if you like, through the two bearings at the top and bottom of the frame and sticks out the top and is tightened down with these spinny uh, lock, lock nuts, I suppose you call them. One at the bottom takes the main tightening, the top one's just to lock it down. So. You need, like a, you need a special tool really to get onto those. Let's see if I can get one, or like a claw. You, you can knock it around with a screwdriver if you're a bit of an animal. Um, am, I, am I feeling like an animal today? Let's see what we got proper tools wise. I have managed to find this uh, adjustable C-spanner, which may just do the job. <laughs> it's impossible. I'm gonna get it up around and there's no, ah, it's pointless. Pointless exercise. Oh, I was going to try and nip it with a I know it's a bit of a bodge, but just with a screwdriver. I see whether it's tight or not. You animal. Okay, all done. I actually, my battery ran out on the camera and I was halfway through the job, but I managed to tighten up the top nut just by hitting it with a hammer and a screwdriver and just turned it quarter of a turn. So I've tightened up the headstock bearings by quarter of a turn. Uh, on the lock nut and there, a little bit bodgy, didn't have a special tool, but to be honest with you, that was absolutely fine. The top nut is torqued down now, 65 foot-pounds of torque, and that was hand tight before. So I think the combination, hopefully, of the brake discs alignment, uh, along with you know this top yoke not even being bolted down at all, will have really helped with the judder, but we're not going to know until we ride it. As I mentioned, I've also got the Dunlop Sportsmart TTs to go on, and this is a 190.55. So this will sort of raise the rear of the bike up a little bit. It will put a little bit more weight on its nose, and it may also help with sort of the changes of direction and stuff. So the actual sort of uh, geometry of the bike is going to change slightly with the 55 on the rear. So can't wait to get that on. Obviously got the match in front. So there we go, as I said at the beginning, the, the jobs I did on the bike have fixed the issue. Now, whether that was the alignment, whether that was the tightening of the headstock bearings, I don't know. One of those things I did in the video fixed it. So I would recommend, first of all, making sure your wheels are aligned properly. That's quite an easy fix. So I'll put links below to that Dave, Vo Dave Moss video. Have a watch. Um, I've tried that on a few bikes, the SMCR, I did it on the GSXR now, and if you have got a front end which is a little bit vibey, doesn't feel quite right, it's worth just making sure it's been tightened up like that in the correct sequence and repositioning the brake calipers as well, I think is another good one. But there are some good tips in there, I think, so if you've enjoyed it, please leave me a like. If this is the first time you've stumbled across my channel, I've got lots of videos a bit like this, garage videos, riding videos, review videos, please consider subscribing below and I will see you on the next video. Cheers guys.